Uh, anyway, this is Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, the show where we watch the HBO show Watchmen. I'm Scott. And I'm Sam. And today we're going to be talking about Season 1, Episode 9, the season finale of the first season, See How They Fly. Sam, why don't you tell the good people where they can find us? First of all, you want to go to NerdCyclopedia.com. You're going to see all our links there. You'll see um, um, our podcast. Make sure that you're subscribing to our Apple Podcast, Spotify, um, uh, Stitcher, iTunes, anywhere that you can listen to our podcast, we are there. Um, tune in, everything. Um, make sure that you are following us all over social media at NerdCyclopedia, um, Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter. Make sure that you are well, going to our Facebook group, Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen. And also make sure that you are leaving us feedback. We love the feedback that we get from you guys watching Watchmen at NerdCyclopedia.com. Mm-hmm. So make sure that you're doing all that. And guess what, people? I'm back. Sorry back. for the for the for the um for the miss there, but you know, you know, Sam, I had to go on vacation for a second with the wife, and Fabulous. you know, get a little Sam. get a little detox going on and everything. So I'm back, and um, Scott handled it well. So thank you guys. <laughs> oh, I'm pointing the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys for you know tuning in to our instant react. Sorry, I had to you know, playing at the five season finale episode and everything. Mm-hmm. It wasn't playing out that way. It was playing months in advance, but yeah. thank you guys for um, hanging out with us and hanging out with Scott. And, um, you know, thank you, Scott, for taking over there. Well, happy anniversary to you and, the, and Mrs. Sam. I appreciate uh, you flipping it over to me. We had a great time. Uh, audience was well-behaved, so I definitely, yeah, well think, behaved, yeah. I definitely think we Good should job, stop for guys. ice cream. Good job. We should definitely stop on the uh, for ice cream on the way to Westworld season three. So all right, you know, yeah, uh, all right. Don't feel <laughs> so everything's good there. Um, so check us out on those sorts uh, sites. Uh, Sam, what's your favorite social media? Let me ask just a just a question for you. So I I, I like um, YouTube and I'm sorry YouTube. I, I like Twitter. I like Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. Um, Instagram for the pigs, obviously, you know. But um, Twitter for the interaction. Yeah. So with Twitter. You get a lot more immediate, um, you know, response and, um, you know, updated news and everything. As soon as you go on there, I like when you look at the top 20 trending topics and stuff, you know, what is what is trending is right there. Mm -hmm. You know, as well as we watch Watchmen every week. I just um, after Sunday's episode, you know, the the trending topic just just skyrockets right after the episode. So it's the number one trending thing. And every, anyone who actually on Twitter can see that this is a, you know, really good show yeah. and it makes them want to watch because it's, it's, it's a conversation piece. It wasn't always like that, you know, yeah. before Twitter, you know, you just had to wait, you know, you get the regular word of mouth at the water cooler, you know, oh. with Twitter, the word, the word of mouth is right there in your face. Yeah, that's right. Kids. There used to be a place where they have little plastic cups and stuff. Instead of, you know, I know, I know, right? They used to give you free water at work. It's something you probably don't get. You uh, meet at break time, yeah. you know. Breaks at, also. At the water. <laughs> right? Something we used to get at work. Uh, so thank you, Sam, for a cover returning. Glad to have you. Now, Sam, uh, I, I got to say a lot about my first reaction on the show. Yeah. Uh, so I have already sort of handled that. Now, our audience, I'm sure, is wanting to hear what you think. So we talked a little off mic. I know that one thing you liked a lot was the ending. The last scene with the oh, Angela. Man. In the pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll keep this brief and everything because we're going to recap. You don't have the whole to keep episode. it brief because this is our show where we get to talk about literally anything we want, and that's the and whole do, point. And do whatever we and want. And do whatever too, we want. So. I could take my shirt off. I'm not going to. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> oh, you don't want to do like a Doctor no. Manhattan? You know? No, man, I'm not going to do a Doctor Manhattan thing. You know? Just wiping it around. You're not, you're people's not faces your, uh, seem like doc, overkill. Your Doc shorts and stuff on. Oh my goodness! You know? I gotta say. You know, I, I got to say a lot about about the show. Uh, Sam, what did what did you think about the last scene? The the last scene was great. The way it just ended off reminded me of like you know um, some movies. I can't think of off the top, off the top of my head and everything. But um, the movie the the season from the way it ended off, the season felt like a nine hour movie to me. Mm-hmm. So the way it ended off with the question mark. Uh, oh, Inception. So the the way that movie ended off where the top was spinning, so you can't figure out, uh, yeah, so you had to really yeah, question yeah, yeah. Um, if it was real or if it wasn't. You know, with the way this season ended and the way this the last scene was, it's a question of whether Angela had the powers or not. So she went on, you know, she used to put the, the to try to touch the water. You know, Dr. Manhattan already prefaced it an episode before, you know, um, you have to see me walk on water. So, you know, we'll use this later. You know, that's very important later. So Angela, you know, took the egg and 
you know, we're left up with a question. Is she getting, you know, is she going to get the powers or not? Great way to end off the um, episode and the season. Great exclamation point. Uh, I, I agree. I thought that was a really excellent way to sort of wrap things up with ambiguity. And mm-hmm. the type of ambiguity, it's almost a choose-your-own-adventure thing that's exactly how the graphic novel ended with Seymour holding Rorschach's journal. So it's an excellent echo. It's of, not a cliffhanger. It's right. an ambiguity. And, and, you know, um, the, the ending is, like you said, left off, amb- you know, um, ambiguous. Ambiguously ended. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought that was really neat. I Have you – let me ask. This is a weird question. Have you ever eaten an egg the way she ate that egg? Like, would no. you – I would oh. mess that up. Like, if it came, if they were like, eat this egg without dropping it on the floor, you got like a, a coin flip at least. <laughs> that egg is just going to end up. No, no. She, she did that and just, you know, she cracked it, ate it, you know, did her thing. She ate it all. Put one, it down. One scoop, no spillage. I just want to say that, that, that's, that's talent. It takes a little something to do that the right way. Definitely. So, do you think that Angela has the, so you, do you think Angela has the Dr. Manhattan power then? Yeah. Yes. I, I yes. agree. I, I, yes. I don't think that there's really a way for them to have spent all that time talking about the eggs and making the waffles and right. and mm-hmm. talking about yeah. what it would be like if somebody that was more proactive had the Dr. Manhattan power. And I, I just think that it's pretty – it has to be the case. Now, it would be a very Lindelofian thing mm-hmm. to do to switch everything up and say, hey, instead of that, <laughs> we've got something totally different. She doesn't have the power. We were just messing with you. That would be a way for them well, to subvert the trope a little bit. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. The great subversion. I mean, a good subversion, everything. And the thing is, it, it, I don't think that's a storyline that they necessarily have to pursue if they do like a season right. two. I, I, in my opinion, you know, even though the Doctor Manhattan was the overall like you know a looming figure, you know, in this in this whole season and everything, um, if they chose to do a second season. Which you know, nine times out of the ten, I probably will. But with or without then the Damon Lindelof, it's a question. Um, I think they should just step away from Angela and Doctor Manhattan. You know, leave that for maybe a whole season and maybe reveal at the end of that season, second season, or just leave it until like the next mm-hmm. season. You don't necessarily have to um, to to really give us um, Angela's Doctor Manhattan because I think the way this season, the last season, just left. You know, the last scene just left mm-hmm. off was that. Just leave everything ambiguous and have, if you do a second season, have everybody question of whether Angela, you know, was um, able to be imbued with, like, the power or not. <laughs> then reveal that in, like, season three. Absolutely. So you can you can see them, you could see them doing something like an anthology here, where they are now still telling you a different story set in the Watchmen universe somewhere else. A different angle, different spin, different history, different characters, different reinvention. But right. this season, of course, uh, was the origin season. And they told, they're telling us origin yes. stories, and I think that it would be remiss of us not to mention that this entire season could essentially be the Angela Manhattan story, like origin story. That's essentially what all this was, because... Angela Manhattan, I like that. Angela Manhattan. Angela Manhattan. Uh, Dr. Mrs. Manhattan, as I was referring to her over <laughs> on a few forums. Okay. Uh, just because I like the Venture Brothers so much. So, the whole story, if you look at it from the beginning, the origin story of Angela Manhattan is set in Tulsa in 1921 because this is the earliest memory she gets personally. Right. Right. So because of the nostalgia and because of Will's, uh, Will's memories, she sees all these things clearly. And that's why the series started out there. So it's Mm -hmm. plain that the point of view that we're getting in the series is Angela's point of view. So it's not so much that she is, um, she's definitely the protagonist and you can tell that by the end of the, by the end of the first season. So what are the important steps in her origin as Angela Manhattan? Because we can infer, let's infer that we're the be- on the beginning of an origin story for her. We're on the beginning. Right. Like, this is Spider-Man okay. 1. We're like 25 minutes in. Bone saw is okay. coming out, you know, uh, just because I'm sure everyone's seen that. Although I have a friend that tells me every superhero movie ever made is better than Spider-Man. I don't know if they're wrong. Uh, but that's, that's what I equate as like the origin story cycle. So what would happen next in a superhero origin story? So this would be the point where um, the traumas happen. So the trauma is losing, losing Cal. And mm-hmm. now she's picking up the empowerment item, right? The elixir, as you would say in the hero's journey. Yeah. So she right, has the elixir. Right, so the right. next step is discovering that she has the power. And that's where we cut off, right? Yeah. So the call yeah. to, to adventure is where we cut. Right. Uh, it's mm-hmm. an interesting place to cut. You know, 
um, we're talking about I'm talking now about things like Joseph Campbell's The Hero with Many Masks, right? Which is something that George Lucas was really into when he did Star Wars. And these are it's it's essentially trying to design tell you what all stories are like, the pathway of, of all all stories, right? That's what he's mm-hmm. trying to tell you. So I, I think that's interesting. And we can infer from that that the next thing that's going to happen is Angela's going to have to acclimate herself to her powers. We can see her trying to hide them. So 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 is she going to do like a training montage? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's just blowing people's heads off, you know what I mean? Just like exploding stars. Like, oh. oh, that didn't work, so let me try something else and everything. Let's do it real quick. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, a, a whole episode of a training montage of um, um, Angel Man had just learning her powers and stuff, if, man. Oh, hey, my if they said it to 80 synth pop, I'll watch the whole thing. I, hey, I, and they got know, the guy to do it, right? They already got the guy on staff to do that <laughs> stuff. So I, I definitely would would watch would watch that show for sure. Uh, so I could definitely see him going that way too. Um, I, but what's nice about this show is I think you you know you get a little multiple choice here. And one of the cool things about watching a show live is that we get to experience that time. Uh, I want to talk a lot more, a lot more about where I hope they're going next week uh, when we do our wrap up for the season. Um, Mm -hmm. But I I definitely, that's my inference from where we are. It's that she definitely has that power, right? They wouldn't have spent all that time talking about eggs. You know, this isn't a, it's always sunny in Philadelphia, right? It has to have a point. Hey, right? you know uh, the, the the greatest question we we is is the greatest the, the great stories in in a way where it leaves the audience still thinking about the way it mm-hmm. ended. You know, just like how Watchmen left. Um, you know, us um um seeing the the um the Rorschach's journal. You know, the um you know guy pick up the Rorschach's journal and possibly even publish it. Um, it leaves us thinking at the end of that of whether um, Adrian's plight, Adrian's plan through the whole process was just going to be interrupted by this one, you know, journal that just interrupted everything. You know, so we're left wondering at the end of that, you know, and of course, you have some time pass and then, you know, the show happens and stuff. But it just left us wondering what was going to happen. So the great stories end in a way to where we continue thinking about them even after the fa- even after the final word, even after the final scene and everything. So this this it, it it's very Watchmen that the way that this um end scene um happened um it's it's very Watchmen like because nothing ever ends right nothing, nothing ever, ever ends. ends so yeah. the only place to stop the story is in media uh in the middle just like the Sopranos right which uh, maybe I'll do a show on that someday uh so let's let's kind of go through the episode a little bit let's talk about some of the characters we meet and I'm glad you brought up Adrian because the, we start off at the the moment of anticipation of Adrian's great triumph, right? Uh, this, this, this car, Karnak, where his cleaning lady, who obviously, I mean, obviously is, is not just a cleaning lady, right? Cause cleaning ladies right, don't have, you know, insemination guns <laughs> from what I know, from what I know. Oh, I've not man. heard of that before, although I would imagine it's possible. Right. So, uh, this is lady true's mother beyond who we've not really mm-hmm. seen before, although we've seen her clone. We've never seen the right. original. And she is right. just as driven as uh, adult Lady True, right? She is just as um, just as forceful a personality, just as determined a personality. And mm-hmm. we find that beyond on November 1st of 1985, inseminated herself with Ozymandias' sample as a 2436, mm-hmm. thus initiating the pregnancy that resulted in Lady True. Um, a mm-hmm. few of the menial pieces of information we get from this. Number one, uh, Lady True was born sometime around the summer of 1986, which makes her mm-hmm. approximately 33 years old, um, mm-hmm. which tracks with everything else we've seen as far as like her timelines and everything. Uh, one thing, we weren't really sure where exactly in the timeline her birth was just because we knew her mother uh, was a girl in the 70s and has passed away now. So there was just sort right. of uh, an ambiguous time from there. They weren't really clear about addressing that. Uh, right. So, you know, summer 86 is an interesting birth time for her. Uh, is that picture, that picture of Alexander the Great that's in front of the uh, the cooler of cum, as uh, Lady True calls it? <laughs> cooler, cooler of cum. Of cum. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Uh, Who's face? Is, is that, is that Ozymandias' face on that Alexander the Great portrait that he would, like, that's his face, right? I, I, you know, I didn't really even take a close look at that, but, I mean, it, it, it just might be he is such... You know, he holds them in such reverence and everything. It wouldn't be surprising if 
um, you know, based on what we know of the hubris of, um, you know, Ozzy and everything, that he would just insert his face on that. Just on the conquer. Right? I mean, Alexander the Great is not a historian. And for those of you who, because we talked a lot about this on the on the uh, Sam Scott, our, our watching Watchmen, listening, uh, reading podcast that we did. But Alexander the Great, if you're not familiar with him as a historical figure, is the uh, OG Great Conqueror. He is the person OG. seen throughout the ancient world as the greatest general of all time. Never lost a battle. Conquered everything from Greece to India. Um, you know, died at 33 because he drank himself to death. Uh, crazy, crazy, crazy. He's a conqueror of such renown that at the age of 38, Julius Caesar was reputed to have wept openly in front of a statue of Alexander in Spain because Alexander's entire career had already passed before he was Julius Caesar's age. So this is... Uh, Alexander the Great is a a monolith in history. Uh, he is essentially the break between the uh, the pre 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 modern world and the modern world. Like there's a real delineation okay. between what he did and what he didn't. And, and and it's important to understand that that this is the transformative historical figure that Adrian Veidt sees himself as. Uh, you c he talks about hubris later, but there is nothing like pretending to be Alexander is and would have classically been known as the height of hubris. It would have been the thing right. they would say, oh, you're pretending to right. be Alexander. They would have used it as the idiom to say you're being, you're using hubris. Your, your hubris is in you, right? Right. Um, right. I always like to mention that because I'm a huge history nerd. As uh, For those of you that aren't aware yet, you haven't been listening long enough if you don't know. Uh, Ozymandias lets her just walk away. So the plan of Ozymandias, and to, to, to go back to what you were saying about Seymour in the journal, uh, these little tiny details, right? It's these little pieces of dust on the microchip that ruin everything for him. It's the thing he couldn't he couldn't account for, and it's his own biases, it's his own limited ability to see the humanity and other people that make that happen. Because he never he never counts beyond. He doesn't like he, he well, counts to ten and, and nine people. There's nine bodies, and he's like, that's it. There was nine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty much, and we see later during the episode. Um, that when no not even later during the episode during um when when the next scene i believe when true um introduces herself yes. you know she she makes a comment about him being just a man and everything you know he makes a comment back well i'm so i'm so, you know i suppose a woman would be you know more apt to do but i guess the inference is that you being just a man you can only see so mm -hmm. much you can only um you know, go so so much because you're in your limited human ability and everything. You're not a guy. You're not a you know, you're not um, you can't see the future. You can't anticipate. Everything cannot be accounted for because you are not the puppet. You think you may be the puppeteer, but you're ultimately not, you know, the puppet master. You know, you can't um, 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 put everything in place because you can't account for what other human beings are going to do. And that's and that's such a great sort of critique. Uh, a response to Ozymandias from the book. It really is. Uh, the whole idea that he can't be the savior because the place he's coming from doesn't allow him to be the savior for all people. And right. the other thing is, and this is something they're making very clear, is that what Ozymandias did is he took away from humanity the right to self-determine because he removed the ability for them to make a mistake. And everybody knows riding a bicycle with training wheels isn't as fun. It just isn't as fun. Uh, but to your point, right. he thought he had set it up so that nothing could be like nothing will go wrong and this will work in perpetuity. He says that he has permanently ended war. I mean, the, the difference between Ozymandias in 2019, who's frustrated with Robert Redford and Robert Redford ignores him and thinks that this is insane. I mean, the difference between that guy and the guy in 1985 who says, I have handled things forever and for a millennium and there will never be a problem again. And that's why it was worth it, right. Sam. It was worth right. it to murder three million people because of the thousands of years of peace that I've secured in 2019. It is obvious he has not secured that. No, no yeah, obviously, because world. No, well, first of all, nothing ever ends. The world still goes on, and as you know, Lori Blake's, you know, makes it says at a certain point. People keep saying the world is going to end, but it still keeps going and everything. So, Adrian, what are you doing? So you have to. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself, but you have to 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 um, you know, you have to be face be you know face with your crimes and everything. You know, he did something horribly horrific instead of letting everything play out, you know, just let it play out. 
um, he decided he wanted to intervene and and essentially committed like an atrocity. And let's and let's make this and let's talk about the parallels of this, because one of the interesting things that we've seen about the production of this show is that this is a very diverse writer's room and it was it was created as a diverse writer's room on purpose. The commentary of the mess that uh, a messianic white savior leaves in their wake. And obviously, you know, the book Watchmen and the show has conditioned us to understand that this is Adrian doing his best. This is him trying as hard as he can and doing the, all the things he knows how to help the world. And what does he do? I mean, does he go and, you know, fix education disparity? Does he go and fix income disparity? Does he create, you know, wealth? So everybody has a standard of living that's acceptable. No, he uses violence. The only thing he knows how to use is violence. It's the only tool in his toolkit. It's it's writ large what the problem is. Well, well, oh, it's 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 a it's a byproduct of of what he 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 said in the episode. He said in the beginning, you know, I'm going to use fear. So fear was his motivation. So what can he do to motivate? Well, what can what what type of fear can he use to get everyone to 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 bend to his um. Uh, I, I don't want to say a villain type will or whatever, but to bend to his way of thinking of what he thinks the outcome might be if he uses his fear. So violence is a byproduct of that. He maybe could use another another way, but he chose to use the um you know the squid to make everyone fear. You know he used that level of violence and everything to make everyone fear. So he uses fear to to scare people into a um a, a to a, a so called peace, but um. Time passes, and as like you said, time passes, and you know people, and as we saw in like a couple episodes and everything, you know um, they still continue to make their weapons, they still continue to make their guns, they still continue to make their um, you know weapons of mass destruction because that's what people are comfortable. With. Mm-hmm. You know, people aren't necessarily comfortable with peace. You know, I, I'm a, and I guess you look at the world today. You know, they they're scared of what they don't know. So what do they do in order to you know, combat what they don't know. They they take the most extreme thing and uses that and uses that as a weapon mm-hmm. and think that 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 is going to um you know keep let them sleep at night. It's interesting that someone who claims to be so peaceful like Adrian would resort to this sort of murder, and, and it is an analogous to putting on a mask and punching someone in the face, right? It's analogous yeah. to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yes, it Are, is. Yes. Like, it's, it's the most extreme example. Think about it yes. in the context of Will Reeves, right? Because Will uh, was working through within the system to bring about what he wanted to, right? He bring about the justice he needed, uh, the restorative justice he needed. And he realizes right. that he can't get that, so then he goes outside the system. Uh, in my opinion, casting Ozymandias as this genius captain of industry who has unlimited resources and obviously has spent billions of dollars in, in the for the express purpose of committing this crime. It just seems like, and this is something I said in, in a blog post I think I wrote a couple of months ago, it seems like there's not a lot of trying other stuff. It seems like there's a jump to this one thing and it'll fix everything. It's a curative. It's a magic pill. Yeah. It's a potion. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, yeah. It's, it's hubris. You think that this is the only way you haven't explored like all the options. Mm. And granted, you know, it's only a 12 issue thing. We haven't seen what other things that he sure. might have. But I think this was the thing, the most extreme thing that he thought of to where all the other options was not even played out or even mm. considered. Absolutely. And as far as Adrian, and we'll, let's, let's just, we'll talk more about, you know, we're not going through things chronologically just because the conversation is not going that way. Let's talk about Adrian's escape. Let's talk about what Adrian does. What Adrian is like when it's just him and mm-hmm. people that he considers to be less than him. I think it's important to draw the following parallel, which is Adrian feels like everybody is this. Everybody is this stunted, no free will, servile, you know, Everybody that he sees, every human he sees is like Dr. Manhattan's people. For him, that's how he sees us, is sheep, manipulated manipulated people, people that don't deserve to make choices because they make bad choices. Right, right. um, That is the classic thing that a conservative would say to a liberal 
to say this is what yeah. you want, right? It's a classic straw man argument a conservative would make to a liberal. So you don't want to make yeah. everybody's choices for you. Uh, for them, you don't want to let anybody have free will. You want to be the nanny state, right? Um, so that's something that you see all the time. It's an interesting inversion um, to have Adrian then come back at the end and actually save humanity from another worse actor. Because as much as Adrian said, you know, as much as Adrian did terrible things to advance a good thing, he never mm-hmm. tried to take Dr. Manhattan's powers. No, he, he didn't try to do that. He didn't that. try to <laughs> take Dr. Manhattan's like abilities. He just said, hey, I'm just going to get rid of him for a while. And, you know, <laughs> problems be damned if we have an issue there, right? So uh, one, of the, one of the really neat things about that episode. Super cool. Um, maybe at the point in time, technology wasn't as, as advanced to where he could have thought. Maybe that was a thought process or cross his mind, but, you know, technology wasn't even as advanced at that point to do what Lady True did, you know. For $46 um, billion. So, dollars. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, how does that exactly work anyway? She says, she, you know, can you stake me? At this point, he's, it, was he, is he dead? Is he, um. It's 2008. So. So. Okay, it's 2008. It was a year later when Dr. Man had, so he knew, oh, I heard there's a little birdie, right? When he says that mm-hmm. about Lady True, it's because that happens later. Uh, and Lady True. So people, so so people knew he was still, so so he was still out and about in the world mm-hmm. and everything. So it wasn't really until 2019 where we see the newspaper clipping yeah. that Adrian Vitus confirmed, confirmed it. Okay. So he missed it. He was missing, and it was a mystery. Let's think about the context for Lady True coming to him here in 2000. Okay. So she wants this money. She wants to get this stuff, you know, put together. She has just failed for the first time. And she mentions this in her speech in the last episode or a couple episodes ago where she says, my only failure was nostalgia. So the reason she comes for Adrian for that money is because of the failure, the failure of nostalgia uh, and probably the enormous settlement that I'm sure the uh, Redford's government made her pay to because mm-hmm. of all the people she hurt with that. So she didn't have it. And so when Adrian says, I'm going to stake you nothing and that you can start with nothing. Well, she's already done that. She's right. already once started from nothing and become a billionaire. And it is very telling that by the time mm-hmm. of the main action of the series here in 2019, she is a trillionaire, which would right. mean if my math is correct, and I, I think that it mm-hmm. is, uh, 1% of a uh, trillion dollars is $10 billion. <laughs> so 4% of her worth, of her wealth went into that thing, uh, which means that... Ninety-five percent of her wealth remains intact at the end of the series. Her mm-hmm. mother-daughter is alive mm-hmm. and has mm-hmm. access to advanced cloning technology and advanced memory implantation technology. So, my question for you is: How long does Lady True stay dead? Fifteen minutes? Twenty minutes? And how does she view that death? Does she wow. view it yeah. as a death, or does she view it as a nap? Like, how does that, how's that going to come off? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a great way to, because, I mean, so, because, because the way we were left, we're left with, we're, we're left with the definitive end, you know, but we're left with some hanging threads, mm-hmm. you know, if you want to call it, with being, um, uh, with Crew's daughter, well, the mother daughter, <laughs> you know, still being there and everything with Lady True, you know, being disintegrated or, you know, dying and stuff. Exploding, whatever um, happened there. Look yeah, whatever, whatever, happens, whatever they did. It's, it's, it's no more Lady True in that version. That's right. You know, so um, it'll be interesting to see how um, any future seasons or episodes um, deal with that. And so let's talk a little bit about um, let's talk a little bit about Lady True, and let's talk a little mm-hmm. bit about what her plan actually was here. So you've got like a Russian nesting doll of plans. We have Dr. Manhattan is in Tulsa. He's got his plan. And he has told right. Will Reeves, <clears throat> this is my plan. He tells Will that in 2009. Mm-hmm. Will then wants to get rid of all the racists because that's what Will's been trying to do forever. He wants to get mm-hmm. rid of Cyclops. He's been fighting these guys with his fists since the 30s. He's, he's, this is his, right. whole, his right. whole drive. So he sees a way mm-hmm. by involving Lady True to... At the same time as Dr. Manhattan dies, get rid of all the heads of the racists in the country. The whole KKK top establishment, gone. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, you can't pass that up. So he figures out a way to bring her resources into that scenario 
by using uh, Dr. Manhattan as bait, which is the type of thing that uh, is a real Batman tendency to, to mm-hmm. come in and say, this is the plan. I can do everything in the plan. and It'll be great. and It'll be fine. Or I can get a lot more done than you think. Uh, <laughs> and that's one of the real superpowers that Batman has is that he's the great strategist. So he can see when, that, when that's right. going to work. Right. So seeing Will be able to do that is great. It really speaks to his experience as a vigilante and, and his experience as a strategist. Um, in a lot of ways, Will is everything that uh, Nelson Gardner wanted to be. He's everything that mm-hmm. Adrian wanted to be. He, he, yeah. he is not just the prototypical, not just the original masked adventurer. He's the optimal masked right. adventurer. Because he stays all the way hidden and takes none of the credit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he's the very inspiration where everyone that takes the examples, use it to their own, like, you know, um, advantages. Well, you know, Captain Metropolis made it into like a, um, you know, uh, ad advertisement and everything, you know, hawking ads mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, he was the ultimate. I He took the best idea of being... It actually, as an accident, mm-hmm. you know, it just happened to him as an accident because what was happening to him to make him to inspire him to put on that hood was, you know, that was horrific. Mm-hmm. You know, he got that, you know, that was that trauma that, you know, put him into that mode and everything to become him. So it wasn't like, you know, he became like a mass adventurer um, on a humbug um or, or or just decided to put on, like, you know, because he was so rich, you know, he was bored and, you know, a bat came through the window. Okay, this is how I'm going to fight crime. Or like how Adrian did it, you know, um, just decided to use his wealth to, you know, do some mask adventuring. Or like how Dan Dryberg did it, you know, because he was, um, you know, frustrated with himself or um, not, not even him going through any type of trauma. You know, he just decided to do it because he had the money. He was left the money, then he just was bored to do something. And if you're Jeff Bezos, why wouldn't you be Batman at this point? Yeah, I, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, you got the cash laying around. Yeah, you know, um, Matt Zer- what, what is it, um, Zuckerberg? Yeah. You know, on, Zuck. he, well, I, I come on, why aren't you guys superheroes? I can get a weird cat haircut and lose my goddamn mind, or I can punch bad guys in the stomach. Because, I mean, I, uh, oh, whatever. Yeah, whatever. You 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 could have done more with your. I work. mean, considering <laughs> what you had. You could have done that. right exactly, and that and that is such a pressure criticism at the end of Doctor Manhattan, mm-hmm. and I think mm-hmm. that for someone like Doctor Manhattan who grew up, you know, as a refugee and, but as someone who kind of went through Princeton and did the whole, you know, old Ivy education, the limitation of Doctor Manhattan isn't anything that he can do; it's limiting mm-hmm. what he wants to do. Right, and right, right. The difference between John Osterman's perspective. And Will Reed's perspective is very clear. Mm-hmm. The the whole of John's trauma or the event that creates John is his own doing. He's responsible mm-hmm. for every piece of his mm-hmm. being there. And and mm-hmm. in the graphic novel, they may, took pains to go through that process. And John talking about what is the uncaused cause? Like, how did I get there? How did I get there? How did I get there? It's all him. It's all him mm-hmm. moving forward. And it's all mm-hmm. him getting into the intrinsic chamber. But Will is different because the trauma that he went through in mm-hmm. Tulsa, right? His, his, mm-hmm. his, his initiating moment is external and his initiating moment as an adult is external. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. had to do this because otherwise these people would have killed him. It's right, not a situation right, right. where he put on a mask because he didn't want to face the consequences of his actions. Mm-hmm. He put on a mask because if he didn't, these people would murder him. Right, 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 and, right. And so it says it's a survivor's type of instinct mm-hmm. on you know, a, a reason on what you need to do because if the racism hasn't, you know, didn't happen. I mean, and but crime still would have happened. It's no incentive to become a superhero, right? right? Or, or, you know, become like a mass adventurer. Maybe others, maybe, you know, others might have or whatever. But his cause for actually doing that is because he had to survive, like you said. And so what are his his ultimate ends are going to be different than someone like Adrian's? Yes, ultimate motivations. Ultimate motivations are going to be more altruistic and less Mm -hmm. narcissistic. Like Adrian's. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I posed this question on Twitter to Ture, who is pretty famous. 
And he said that uh, when Angela takes the egg, she's not doing the same thing True's doing because it sort of falls into her lap. And mm -hmm. the power itself, I mean, it exists and it could be used to do things in a positive way. So you have to grab it and you have to guide it because mm -hmm. somebody is going to get it. Right. Somebody's going to get not it. To, right. Not to get super off topic here, but Silicon Valley, which airs after Watchmen, just ended. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. uh, the basic premise of the ending was... You know, they design this technology that ends up being too good, right? It can crack any security mm -hmm. code, so they kill it. Mm -hmm. But at the end, they're doing... Spoilers for anybody who, who didn't watch it's a, um, Silicon Valley. It's a comedy, <laughs> whatever. I don't care about that. Uh, so the idea is they go forward in time and do a documentary about them doing that. And nobody and like they're talking to people and they don't remember them. And the whole mm -hmm. point was they had to fail so spectacularly that no one would forget, so no one tries to do the technology again. And it's right. just it just showcases that that's impossible. Right. Someone's going to get it. Someone's someone's going to utilize that technology. When the allies discovered that the atomic bomb was possible, you know, mm -hmm. the thing about a science fact is that it doesn't change in Germany. Right. It's still right. possible. Right. 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 So right. if you leave this egg, even if you think there's a one percent chance that Dr. Manhattan's power could be in there, well, mm -hmm. the only chance you're taking is that someone worse than you is going to find it. Right. So you didn't create this. You didn't put the situation out there, but it's such a dangerous thing that you can either destroy it or use it. And that's mm -hmm. it. And there's no real way to destroy it. Uh, and I think that coming from a place of the Tulsa African-American community, coming from that place, I just mm -hmm. think that you have to be more compassionate. There's just not a way for you to be so... <sighs> callous and inhuman like John Osterman was. Right. Well, I mean, some people beg to differ. You know, they don't have to be like anything. You know, they should just be, you know, and let them make the choices and stuff. But me and you would like to think that, you know, you should show some more, you know, compassion because of the circumstances and situations. You know, uh, everybody bleeds red. Um, but, you know, um, we all go through different things based on, you know, our skin color or lives based on being a man, based on being a woman. We just go through different type of traumas. You know, with women, unfortunately, they go through rape situations way more than, um, um, you know, than uh, males would. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, you know, black people go through racist stuff way more than they would, you know, with, um, you know, um, you know, white Caucasian Americans and everything. Um, so, is 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 different aspects of different situations where um this thing with the doctor doing doing much more is a still a question in itself should he do more like you said does he want to do more you know because if if anybody's in view with that power um it's hard. It's kind of hard for us to think on in the, in the instance of a guy, because like I said on one other podcast, so I'm not guy, so I can't even you know speculate on how that would be. But um, our 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 essence, our our way of being, the our, our sense of ourselves would still be in there with the powers of a guy. You know, um, our our guy Joe King, with him being already a racist. You know, um, and wanting the, 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 his motivations on even getting that power to do the things that he thinks is um, right, you know, in his mind and everything um, is a dangerous thing for everyone else who's not in his realm of thinking, you know, versus a person like Angela who really has no motivations but just to do good and everything. And some would say that her, her having a power would be a better you know, is in better hands than, uh, you know, than the white racist and well, everything. I mean, that's for sure. But, <laughs> I mean, I'm not, let's I mean, not say it, everybody it's still, says. It's, 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 it's still two perspectives of who thinking was right and who thinking was wrong, you know. And Osterman took an approach of, I'm going to be hands off and not be involved with any of this, mm -hmm. you know, as Dr. Manhattan, because I cannot judge. I cannot, even though I have the powers of a god, I cannot interfere, intercede with, you know, with what's going on and everything. But Adrian, you know, thinking he, with his hubris and everything, thinking that he was um, um, uh, the master, puppet master, took it upon himself to, you know, um, to, to, to imbue that psychic squid and, 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 and control things. 
and wish he wish he had the doc powers of Doctor Manhattan to do it more. Been so fast for him. I mean, it took him what years and decades to do what Doctor Manhattan could have done with a snap of his finger. Uh, yeah. One of the things about the Watchmen movie that they changed is they made Dr. Manhattan, Manhattan they, they put the blame, the bit in the patsy for Adrian's scheme. Um, mm-hmm. But Dr. Manhattan would never intercede on Earth like that because Dr. Manhattan doesn't see himself as human anymore. And maybe he right. did at first, but that's changed. Mm-hmm. And, and when you think about, like you're saying, I mean, does Dr. Manhattan do absolutely nothing to change history and change the quality of lives? I mean, absolutely not. He, I mean, he, I'm sorry. Absolutely, he does do things. He... Mm-hmm you know, synthesizes lithium and gives us teleportation mm-hmm. technology and sort of solves the fossil fuel, you know, uh, you're cut, I call it the cutting the board crisis, right? So, you know, you know, you got renewable mm-hmm. energy, mm-hmm. but that's it. He gives yeah. us additional means because he feels like if he didn't, he would be like, it's almost like he's sending money home to his old family. You know what I mean? And, and his old human reality. And now he's got Dr. Manhattan but- money. Right. But on the other side, look what he did in Vietnam oh, yes. and all the people they killed there. You know, he used he let he let him he let himself be used by government. Um, you know, you could debate on whether it was right or wrong, but but he, he let a, a, a superpower use his superpowers to commit um, mass atrocities and everything. So is he any different in that aspect of, um, you know, what Adrian did? Eh, you know. Uh, it's a it's a numbers game, you know. Adrian killed more people or whatever, but you know the doc did just as much. But even though he was being used by you know the government, you know he did he did a lot. It's that he doesn't have a, a morality. It's not so right. much that he's an immoral person. It's that morality for for John Osterman as a person was not the number one overriding concern of his life. You know, he's not someone like. Um, He's not someone like Ozymandias who makes himself see the consequences, right? He's he's his dad says you're not going to be a watchmaker anymore. You're going to be a physicist. That's it. Mm-hmm. Like that's the impetus to his change. You know, there's not anything ex- uh, there's not anything like uh, mm-hmm. behind him. Right. You know, he's a very okay. superficial guy. Right. So uh, it doesn't seem like he's he's super deep or thinks about these things very much. So it would make sense that he brings again that perspective. Okay. That sort of academic, disinterested, distant perspective that led them to create the atomic bomb in the first place in our reality. Mm-hmm. Um, Angela is not going to be like that. And we can tell for a lot of reasons. Number one, um, Angela's always wanted a family. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Her motivations are way different. She wants everyone to be safe and happy mm-hmm. and she's always wanted to nurture and be a mother and she's one of those things so much that when presented with the opportunity to create a family mm-hmm. she took it even in even though the the origins of that of her family are so fraught right with, with trauma and trauma, trauma. Mm-hmm. so her family's origin story is a lot like yeah the superhero origin story yeah. right it was yeah. created out of violence and a, and a miraculous happening of the teleportation of Mike <laughs> to heal right, Flex. Right, right, right. Which is a really great, a great moment where Dr. Manhattan, like, transported, teleported that dude to, to Arizona. Oh, man, how about, um, okay, so the, the beginning of the episode where um, we find out that Dr. Manhattan was there the whole time. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, um, how about the, the rocket ship coming to Europa and all, everyone, all the, the, the Phillips and Crewshanks, just lining up just to, to, to say goodbye to him, you know, and then the, um, the, the warden, the game warden and everything asking him if he, if he was like a good adversary. And he was just like, no, no, he drops him. <laughs> oh man. You, you had to feel for that, that Phillips. Cause he would, he asked it so honestly and everything, you know, he thought he was a perfect one. Then why did you make me put on a mask? You know, <laughs> It was like, because he was bored, you know. Because he, he just wanted to, just wanted to, to find a man in a mask. Yeah, you know, that, that was that was the simplest thing. That was that was funny. And he, knew, <laughs> he knew there was nothing. He knew they wouldn't do anything to him. He was, right. just, he was just bored. He was like in yeah. solitary confinement for eight years, and he tried to yeah. make the best of it at first, and then he had to get his plan moving, and then he just – it seems like, you know, watching that the Adrian scenes this season, it seemed like there was this track of ultraviolent insanity – but really, it was all measured, and that's 
That's crazy. Over, over, over time, I guess it would be. And, and you know, given the whole overall arc of the season and everything, it makes the most sense. Because if you're put in a place where you have no access to anything but the, the tools that you have there and the people that you have there and the type of clones that you have there and everything, um, and no way to get off, no, absolutely no way, you're, you, you have no, essentially no hope but just to, to hope that time is on your side and that eventually somebody will come come get you. <laughs> it's it's weird to see, you know, to watch the, this whole series and, you know, we did all the prep work for it and we watched it all now. For there to have been an, like an, a straight up sci-fi marooned astronaut story to be hiding in the through lines of this is so, it's yeah. so crazy awesome, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you probably cut all his scenes together, it's probably about one episode about a guy being really bored on a deserted island and thinking yeah, about different yeah. things to do and right, then getting right, all right. frustrated with it and maybe going crazy and killing the other person on the island with him and, you know, but still having a plan for escape. And uh, it really tells you how, you know, how far in advance Ozzy Mandy has can plan for something. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, he's ready with his Gatling gun of squid babies. <laughs> uh, to save the day um i i love the reaction to um um i love having looking glass in that in that in that scenario and seeing everything with him um when when john Tr you know transported them back to crunk you know um uh, karnak and adrian um lori and it was, it was such it was such a, a a great thank you and everything notes from for all, all of us graphic novel readers to hear that conversation between him and Lori happen and then looking glass through all the trauma that he experienced with the squid say you're the one you know what I'm saying you you're the one that caused all this and everything you know I'm surprised that he didn't react uh, get you know even angrier about that mm -hmm. you know um because well, they hadn't showed him that tape. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If he hadn't yeah. been prepared, he'd have lost his mind. He could lost oh him. man, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was already, you know, prepared for that and everything. But still, seeing him in the flesh and seeing him in the face, that was a long trauma that that looking glass had uh, waited and uh, went through. Um, but yet and still they still had to save the world in that instance. So I mean, it was if Hitler had a plan to save the world and I had to help him turn a knob, you oh. know what I mean? And then he was like, Well, see you guys later, I I'd be like, Well, you're still you're still Hitler. You're still <laughs> like, Hitler. That, that didn't that stop all change, of a you know, you, you haven't changed all this. You still killed three million people, <laughs> I mean, you know. And, and and then Adrian was right, you know. Um, after all this time, you're still going to try to hold this against me? It's been 30 years, Lori. What are you doing and stuff? Well, it doesn't change the fact that you did kill three million people. You know, at the end of the day, I still got to bring you to justice because that's what my FBI training has taught me. Mm -hmm. Now, whether that's going to succeed, you know that that's that's going to be a different thing because it brings a lot of politics into the situation. I want to see him fart at a U.S. federal court oh. the same way he did. I just want to see the contempt because Man, you know that funny. the best way to do this, in my opinion, is that he's on trial all the next season, like the whole year, and you just see him like like just being ridiculous, and he's yeah. just abrasive and says like you know. His, his whole defense is like, you're not fit to judge me because you didn't have sovereignty over what I did. It's going to be his whole defense. It'll go the whole time. He won't say a word. It'll just fart. And it's going to be crazy. I, that's what I hope they do. And, and, and they better have that music, yeah. the, the the opera music and everything they that. used for, um, for, for the Ozymandias scene. Yeah. And the way that they played it when he was, you know, doing his speech to Lori, how dare you be in judgment of me? You know, I mean, it just brought us back to his his moments on the um, on Europa and stuff. And you're just laughing at Adrian because what he's doing is just so ridiculous in the way he, the way, the way Jeremy Irons is playing him. Yeah. It's just that, you know, this guy has just so full of himself that, you know, you're, you're just like, wow, Adrian, you know what I'm saying? Wow. And then the music cuts as soon as, um, you know, looking at a glass hits him over the head. <laughs> and, and that, that was, a, it was, it was a great way to put comedy into like a, um, you know, uh, 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 as far as really the whole season with, yeah. with the whole Adrian um, story arc. I think it's great that that like that's what he hears in his head when he starts talking in the <laughs> opera music, and then it goes away when it when he stops thinking it goes away. So it happens when he stabs the gameskeeper. It happens when he gets hit by uh, biology. I, there, I, I love the way this show taught us how to watch this show mm -hmm. because it's not a lot of other shows like this that actually lost it. The same thing, you know, taught us how to watch this show. Leftovers did a similar thing, although it was still. You know, structured. It didn't go uh, as 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 much as 
Washington was more like lost than leftovers. Right. But still, leftovers had to happen in order for Watchmen, you know, to be developed to this point. But I'm I'm glad the way this show taught us how to watch it from the um from the the scenes being cut, you know, from the music being cut, you know, to how his characters interacted, how certain things. Um, are shown but not being said. There's not a lot of exposition between characters, but you're figuring out if you're paying attention, you know, to how this thing works because it's not a lot of shows out there that actually take that bit of time to to teach the audience how to watch its own show. Right, this is what's going on. I'm excited for a rewatch on this. I think that it's a uh, it's a really great again origin story for Doctor Angela. Right. Right, right. Let's and, let's talk let's let's talk a little bit about Lady True. I mean, we haven't oh, really yes. said a whole lot about her and so, her motivations and what she was doing. So Lady True is so I think that Lady True's mom was in Vietnam and her village got burned up by Doctor Manhattan. And so she always has hated Doctor Manhattan. Always hated, yeah. And I think that when given the opportunity, she planned to get to Ozymandias or maybe she was just opportunistic and realized once, hey, I can get to Ozymandias and I can create another genius. Uh, I need his genius genes, I guess. Which mm -hmm. Must have been what she was thinking that she didn't have them all <laughs> on her own. Right. Although, although Beyond, I mean, if she's a straight up, Beyond's a straight up clone of her grandmother, mm -hmm. her grandmother was very smart because oh, yeah. Beyond is like four PhDs or whatever. Like she's doing all this dissertation stuff at like 10 or 12. So, yeah. like, you know you know that this is not your average, you know, right. your average person right. that you're dealing with. Um, that trauma and realizing that Dr. Manhattan has the powers he has and chose to do the Vietnam thing instead of anything else. I mean, that would be a betrayal of his potential. Mm -hmm. um, that's gotta be how she reads that. So she has to take it from him because again, the power exists and if it's not being used for good, it's being used for evil. Right. So she can't fix everything because she doesn't have dr manhattan's power right so she needs it right and she thinks oh once i get that done everything will be fine because there won't be scarcity and everything will have everything they want but she's making the same mistake adrian made which he seems to have learned from which is the free will exists and you can't right. just make people do things for the next right. 30 years like they're gonna right. be dr manhattan's kids right 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 and she's jumping in. She's jumping to also to what we said, the most extreme, you know, point in, in doing what she wants to do and everything, you know, by trying to take it from it, you know. And let's think about it this way. Adrian has now if Adrian sees us all as will list zombies, right, because we don't we lack the intellectual capacity to realize our potentials. Mm -hmm. Guess how he views Dr. Manhattan's children exactly the same way except they really are that Dr. Manhattan has effectively created what Adrian mm -hmm. thinks humanity is right right which right, is interesting right, right. because that means that he's created humanity from his own perspective right so mm -hmm. he doesn't see us as having free will or the ability to think or the ability to do things we're told not to do or anything like that either that's how Dr. Manhattan sees us but Adrian knows we're different and he can tell the difference Oh yeah, yeah not, awesome. especially now that he's been on a um, planet where he's actually seen the results of what he thought he's seen, you know, with um, you know, people being servants and you know, not really having free will like that and everything. Um, you know, he's seen he's seen the he's seen he, he's seen what he wants to see, but realizing throughout time, you know, through the time that he's there, this is not really. Free will is a more exciting thing to manage <laughs> versus what uh, it's, it's more exciting than being bored on Europa. I think that Dr. Manhattan's people would have bought Adrian's plan 100 percent without yeah. any sort of reservation. And right. their world would be perfect right now. But we're not them. And right. that is obvious because he's aware of True's narcissism. Mm -hmm. He's aware of it. And he says you can combat it. And here's how to combat it. And that's different from when he left. Yeah. When he left, he was still uh, saying, nobody cares about me, and why doesn't right. everybody see me as a savior? He's lamenting right. that. Right. But he right. stopped that now. Right. So he's moved on. It seems oh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's definitely graduated and, I guess, matured in that aspect. I mean, he's, he still doesn't want to take responsibility no, for anything no, he's done. No. <laughs> <laughs> he still doesn't want to do that. You know, he saved the world still, you know. But, um, but yeah, he still recognizes that 
he can because he could have just left well enough alone and let Lady True just just do you know what she did. But he said in, he said in an episode that you know um, it takes one to know one. Yeah. So he's a narcissist too, and uh, you know uh, I, I'm I'm just I just love how they they handled his arc, mm-hmm. uh, his whole. This whole surprise at Wade knowing like what happened and thinking Lori told him and all that stuff, uh, you know, Mister Zepic, a pleasant surprise. He's just like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You use her, her, um, her original name, her, her, um, yes, yeah, her birth name and everything, um, because at that from that point he hasn't seen her since, um, Carnap, right? Yeah, probably not. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he never he, left, I guess. He just yeah. There. Right, 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 right. So he would, uh, he was still, you know, <laughs> that was just a great callback for us, you know, graphic novel readers. It was just several of those there, you know, that wasn't really, you know, overbearing or anything like that, but just great callbacks for us. What old do Senator you think? Keen, I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Old Senator Keen and stuff. Um, I'm surprised that, that Lori didn't have a much more crazy reaction to seeing John considering that she's she's been pining for him for so long and everything with like the 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 big blue you know um um and also you know the um you know go, calling calling him in the um boost and everything you know um but maybe that's just something that we wasn't really meant to see because we know John's relationship with Angela at this point and to have it really to, to have it really a thing with uh, a triangle would be too late in the series. You probably needed more episodes to really expand on her relationship with um, John because of the previous relationships that we know she had back in a graphic novel. You know, too much callback to the graphic novel would be just a lot of work for, you know, I guess a casual viewer. But um, but I, I'm just surprised we didn't see more of a reaction with her seeing John appear there. And John he, was just... Reading quotes he, from the novel the whole time, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's the, the thing in Afghanistan? Was that from the novel as well? Yeah, it's from his interview on TV. I'm oh, not aware of a situation in Afghanistan that requires okay. my attention. And everyone okay. goes like, "Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, yeah." They're like, "Stuff's stuff's weird over there. You might want to." No, I do not know. Yeah, yeah, that was. I don't great see the here. difference between a, a human, a dead body, and a living body have the same number of particles. <laughs> That's what a detachment's scary. He see, uh, see, 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 and time all at once, all at once, and everything. You know, uh, I liked how at the end, all the, um, you know, Red Scare wasn't wearing his mask in the last shot of him. Yes, yes, the yes. Jenny who didn't have hers same. on, so it looks um, like the the, the, the background policing's over. Yeah, the the bad the the background policing. You know, they had theirs down. If you if you look closely and see, you know, uh, they uh, they all had their mask on. It seems like Lady True brought, at least recorded that whole let's murder the racist piece uh, for broadcast because it seems like everyone kind of know, like all those cops were kind of aware that uh, Senator Keene sort of not not a great <laughs> not a great example to follow Senator Keene. Right? Well, yeah, yeah, that that oh man, if he actually became president and everything, uh, it's oh that that was just been I mean. You know, you talking about having Manhattan powers, but he decided to to go one way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let's try to get his powers. I, you know, Bump being president, you know, uh, let's just try to let me try to get his powers. And it's funny that they chose him to do that. But anyway, it's the hubris, um, man. It's the hubris. It's the same thing about like, you know, without being specific, there's a candidate for president who people are saying is being very calculated in the way he's acting right now. Very cynical. Um, there's this, it's interesting that the apple that Joe Keen tried to bite that killed him was Dr. Manhattan and not the presidency. Like if he just would have been a regular, like racist, (laughs) like regular style racist, he'd have been all right, but he had to go extra. Like he reached beyond his standing and tried to grab the apple, right? Right. Tried to become Dr. Manhattan. If he had not, not never done that. If that had never entered his mind to do, then their plan probably would have worked. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. Worked because without without all the shenanigans with Lady True, never would have happened. Like, well, right it's, it's, it's it's like you said, hubris. You know, trying to attain power, and he saw something more powerful than being a president. You know, being Doctor Manhattan, you could have power to do anything that you know that you want him. You know, presidency—that's small potatoes compared to what he could do as Doctor Manhattan. Anything. 
This reminds me of a time when I was in school. And a school Uh-oh. lunch. So school lunch comes around, and they have a new pie. And I usually would get, you know, the banana cream. It's my favorite. Uh, but they'd have new pie. And I would try the new pie, and it wouldn't be as good. Mm-hmm. And that's my hubris right there. <laughs> same thing, same thing, really. Trying to become a god, wanting a different variety of pie. It's all the same. One, the, the one, hey, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, sometimes a pie tastes better than the other pies and everything, but still, they're pies. They're still pies. <laughs> anyway, so the race, the racist cyclops people get what they deserve, which is so, immediate so, so, vaporism. Yeah, yeah, immediate disintegration and everything. But that still doesn't eliminate all racism in the world, um, you true. know, Reese. You know, so eliminating that. Nothing ever ends. That's just the whole underlying theme of everything. Nothing ever ends, which was a great tagline in um, you know HBO's whole advertisement. Nothing ever ends. I guess that's a lesson we're being taught time and time when people um, try to imbue their 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 judgments, motivations, and everything on other people, and thinking they're going to resolve you know um, something. It 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 may. Um, it may the the top mid the lid the can may have been you know closed in the meantime, but it's eventually going to be open at some point, or someone else is going to open it when you leave or die or something like that. Nothing ever ends. Um, that's just that's just you know that's just the way it is. So will reason eliminating the races and everything doesn't eliminate all racist people throughout Earth, <laughs> you know, at that point in time and everything. Because with them leaving. Someone else, you know, there's going to be another group of people that's just going to eventually take their place. So what essentially, what are you eliminating there? Mm-hmm. You know, that's just more or less revenge on his part, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, I'm fine with that. <laughs> um, I, I, it's, 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 well, the whole but, Cyclops, like the whole, the race is getting tied into this is all Will. Like that's his whole, his whole thing his was whole getting deal, tied right. in. So that's like his, you're right, his final revenge. Like I'm gonna get the, the Cyclops, right? Mm-hmm. He's been after these guys since his very first, uh, his very first, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so him, him being able to tie them into that, and and his tying of them into it also tied Lady True into it, right? So he tied everybody together, and is what essentially ended both the the political threat to humanity posed by the Cyclops people. Right. And the existential threat to humanity posed by Lady True's uh, acceptance of the Dr. Manhattan powers. Right. Um, that's the thing. If you want everything to run right for humans, you can do it clockwork, a clockwork, and that's making people do things. Mm-hmm. Or you can do it through convincing people. Mm-hmm. Uh, the economic motivation is the, the number one way to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's always interesting to see what happens when people skip that one <laughs> skip skip, a step. like what's the point trying to talk me into this i won't do it anyway right uh that's a lot of times what superheroes are doing right you know if you ever watch dog the bounty hunter you know there's those scenes where he's got the he gives him a cigarette he talks them in the back about not committing crimes anymore mm-hmm. uh th- that's something i see here right okay okay <laughs> I okay that. right uh, i can see that over here um so that that's kind of there's so much to talk about this episode. Like, I feel like there's stuff we haven't even touched on yet. And yeah, I mean, that's that's the basic crust of it. We you know we got through Lady True, we got through you know Doctor Manhattan, those old or over. You know, we got through Angela and stuff. We got to see Wade come back. You know, his interactions with um um Lori. You know, because she's she was like you know uh, you were like mirror guy. <laughs> it's like you he, he just he said, <laughs> you know what my name is. You know what my name is, Looking Glass. <laughs> I want to see them work together so bad. I yeah. just want to see them be partners for a season or two, chasing down vigilantes, and maybe there's different places where the vigilante activity happens, and all of a sudden there's some something like insane happens, like everybody's dead, and they're like, right. "Whoa!" And they got to figure out what it is. It's Angela. Maybe that's where they go next year. Speaking speaking of um 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 partners that we didn't see, yeah. you know. <laughs> we didn't see um, Lori's partner, you know, uh, whoever, yes. you know, we, 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 a lot of people wanted, I wanted, I expected to see Lube Man, but the way the episode went, I can mm. see why he wasn't included because he just would not have fit, you know, within that. 
You know, and like I, I, I was thinking, okay, it would have been a great after credit scene to see him running somewhere and then slide into like a sewer. It's like an after credits, you know. Um, Who um, are you? And he just looks yeah. at the camera and he goes, Astroglide. <laughs> I mean, that's a good name, but I think it's branded. I don't know if you get to copy. Hey, can we check? Is there a trademark lawyer around? We can right, take a look. right, right, uh, right, right. That's a great name for a superhero. Already taken, probably not what it is. Mr. Slippy would be pretty good. Mr. Slippy. Mr. Slippy, you know. But, uh, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. See, seeing him would have been like real, real fun and everything. But we did get a kind of epilogue yes. with the um the the the, the um, PD, you know, PD, PD files afterwards. So apparently he got fired, you know. He must have looked, in, he must have looked into everything and been like, what the? And just but, been but, like, but, this is what happened, right? He like figured out what happened. They were like, we're not looking into this anymore, Dale. And he was like, well, you know, you can't. You know, you can't keep me down. I'm the greased watermelon. <laughs> yeah, the greased watermelon. Yeah. <laughs> but um, whoever wrote that memo and everything, Drew, you would just totally dismiss everything that he – it's like, why is he wasting so much time with this? It's too much time. It seemed like this guy was obsessed. You know, you know, he had his comic books and stuff, yeah. and then they had to pair, you know, in parentheses, why people are still, you know, obsessed with pirate comics yeah. at this point, which is really a dig at all us – you know, people who are still obsessed with comic, you know, as a meta commentary and thing, you know, for nowadays um, on um, in 2019, comic books are the most superheroes are still the most popular thing. You know, ironically, with it being just um, um, just a thing that you got made fun of when you was like um, back in the 80s. Yeah. You know, I mean, so much more so than then. And I mean, I don't remember superheroes generating billions of dollars in profits for the largest corporations on Earth in the 80s. Uh, you know, so that's something that's a little bit different now, right? The, 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 the scale of the media has gone up. So for those of us that did invest our time learning about these things and learning about the mythology, that's guess right. what? Guess what, kids? We're still cool. We were yeah, cool. Yeah, back yeah, then. yeah, 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 yeah. Revision of nerves, man. That was a, um, that was a prophecy. <laughs> that's right. As we control more and more of the world, we'll, uh, -huh. uh yep, we'll, yep, we'll yep. be doing more of that. Uh, but the, um, yeah. yeah, the PDPD files, man, I, I, I thought that was a great way to, um, just cap him, you know, they, 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 they fired him and it was just a great, um, great memo just on just, just discounting everything that he, he even went through as far as him. <laughs> uh, you know, he got to do, let's think about this from a, from Dale's perspective. So he's in the FBI and he's a, got a desk job that he's obviously got too much energy for. Right. If you read the PDPD files, you know that. So he finally gets assigned to something out. Who's his partner on this assignment? Silk Spectre 2. Mm -hmm. They have sex. Like the first, like, I mean, think about that from PD's perspective, first of right. all. They have sex. And then he runs around Tulsa in his getup that nobody can, nobody recognizes him for, and everyone essentially assumes he's a cop. Uh huh, yeah. And, and he gets injected into the middle of this conflict between, you know, lady true and dr manhattan that she ha he has to recognize his comic book esque right he has to recognize the the uh the gravity of the situation and he's just a bit player in all of it so he gets to experience it all i mean i think about think about that from from i mean your own perspective if you were right. dlpd how right. awesome that week would be right i mean wow that's a pretty <laughs> great week uh i wouldn't want it to end either i don't know if i'd be a super super one to go back to my desk job in the basement I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. He's about to live his life how he, you know, he wants to do it, which is great for him. So, so one of the, the sentences says, you know, let the legacy of PDP be an example of how not to conduct <laughs> professional, <laughs> for, uh, how not to conduct professional <laughs> electronic discourse. Moving forward, I would expect the, um, to see the only the most um, succinct analysis and most pertinent information on your folders and stuff. You know, they're just going at this guy. Um, His bosses finally were like, what's all this on your hard drive? <laughs> we haven't looked for five years. And it's... Similarly, a maintenance crew will be boxing up, up the contents of PD's um, office later this afternoon. Anyone interested in taking um, from the stacks of media, uh, ephemera, ephemera, uh, I'll probably ephemera. jack that word. Yeah, ephemera, uh, ephemera uh, and straight up junk. <laughs> clutter his workspace multiple co uh, copies of rorschach's journal hundreds of comic books like i was saying uh and let the record reflect that i personally removed a new album from nine inch nails yeah uh, meta, meta commentary for like trick resner and everything <laughs> and title the manhattan project oh man it, 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 this thing is just you know 
uh, with, 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 with classic material. My understanding from Social PD is now he now has gone missing. So <laughs> given the simultaneous deaths of the U.S. Senator and a prom prominent trillionaire, it would appear PD has taken it upon himself to continue the investigation despite her closing it. <laughs> well, well, PD, PD, this is P, this is PD's origin. So his trauma is that he got fired from <laughs> from the FBI after that awesome week. Made an awful week and put a terrible taste in my mouth about the whole experience, and I'm angry. Oh man, I will become Lou Man. They said my plot, <laughs> my plot summary was the worst one they got, and they published it. Oh man, that is just some classic, classic, classic material there, man. So I, I would love to see a Lube Man spinoff or somehow, but 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 it's it's funny too how these PDPD files have given this character has have actually made a character out of him because he wasn't really presented in a show like this. You know, we only seen like bits and elements of his character in the show, but now we're because of the files that, that we read, we're seeing just uh, his overall character. Mm -hmm. You know, and it would be great to see that actually on screen. Uh, I hope they give him more time, man. I want to see, at the bare bones, very least, I want to see Laurie and Wade bring him in. Yeah. And I mentioned this a lot. I just I love that dynamic. If you can give, if you give me Laurie Blake and Looking Glass, Chef's Kiss, I love it. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and setting up this whole season again as the origin of that pairing, right? So yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the media yeah. res of that pairing. Like, this is how they got to each other, right? They got to each other through this insane story. There's the creation of Dr. Angela also and the, the creation of everybody. The origin story of everybody finding out the Hood of Justice was a black man. And it's all sort of tied together that way. And it's an, it's an interesting theme um, on a show that's billed as a long-anticipated sequel to right. a right. great piece of literature – it didn't necessarily need a sequel. It didn't need a sequel. It was self-contained and perfect and good as it is. For them to have essentially made the standalone mm -hmm. season an origin story mm -hmm. takes a lot of balls to do that. Yeah, yeah. We got the origin story of Angela, like you said, origin story of Looking Glass. We got the origin story of um, Hooded Justice. We got even got the origin story of um, Loot Man. Yes. <laughs> you know? Um, they were less uh, than pleasant about my plot summary. The fact <laughs> that they ranked it, but ranked it at the bottom. And then, then we finally, um, oh, and we got we we got everything all, <clears throat> you know, tied all tied up. So the theme, you know, it's a season. It's a season of origin stories. How people came to be. How people make the choices that they do when faced with trauma. You know, um, and it was a great way to um, a great a great way to view like you know these get into these characters. Um, you know, trauma is an underlying thing uh, that makes these people do the things they do, especially when putting on masks and stuff. Um, and it was just it was just a great way, great, great, great character study for all these characters, you know, throughout this season. And for me, you know, I'm, I'm ready to come back next year. I hope they do. Um, there's so many th places they can go with this. I made a list of the things I want to see next season that we'll talk about next week. Yeah. Um, but this episode is a really excellent capstone because everything that is laid out makes sense internally. Mm -hmm. And it features the death of Dr. Manhattan, which is something I thought was impossible at the beginning yeah. of the series. So it, it's right. changed the rules, and it has also told us a lot more about things that we knew about in the past. Uh, my favorite instance of that is that the, even though they changed – the putative origin of uh, Hooded Justice, right? They made Hooded Justice a black person. They didn't take out all the details about his relationship with Nelson Gardner. Right. Uh, that changed. L knowing to leave some of that in place to moor it all to, you know, Hooded Justice has a secret. He has a secret. He has a secret. He won't. He's not going to show you his face because he has a secret. It's a secret. It's a secret. Uh, it's homosexuality. He's gay. Okay, right. that's enough to make me say that's a secret that I'm sure he would want to keep in that time. Right. But there's another even bigger, more bedrock secret. Oh yeah, he yeah. He's he had like about three different layers. He had one, number one being a um, you know, black man, number two being a hooded um, you know, a mass adventurer, and then being gay. So, you know, his his psychological outlook, I mean, it, it just it just was crazy for him. I mean, and he still has 
a secret origin story for himself as Will Reeves, a name he took. Yes, yes, from yes, yes. the Bass Reeves movie. So Will Reeves himself is a character. Will right. Reeves himself has an right. origin for trauma. Hooded Justice has his own origin for trauma. Uh, so it's just it, it's an incredibly complex story, and it would make sense that that this sort of that this sort of reaction to trauma would be most possible coming from the black community. Yeah, yep. it just makes a lot of sense. So yep. so. Yep. Uh, Bravo, he, he, Bravo. he took Bravo to Damon Lindahl for recognizing uh, a, a big character in you know in the Watchmen universe, um, which would adjust it, even though he inspired like all the other heroes and everything. But good on recognizing it was almost like it was meant to be, mm -hmm. you know, with the noose, the mask, and the hood and everything, um, and just playing it out and characterizing like that. You know, Dallin Moore probably had no wherewithal of how he was going to do that, had no incentive to make any background. But Dana Lindelof saw the hole and was like, okay, I'm going to fill this. I'm going to fill this up, and this is – it just makes so much sense. And I think Alan Moore would be proud I, I hope if, he, if he approved. He didn't approve. He didn't approve. I don't know how many ways – acceptable ways there are to continue this story. Um, I think that I, you have to wait as long as they've waited – because Ozymandias has to be right after at a certain point to yes. tell the story yes. that they're telling yes. where he gets yes. away with yes. it, you have to wait. It, 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 can't, it can't be five years, it can't be a year from now. 30 years is a good enough time to, to, to go, you know, tell this story. So it just make, it makes me um, think of how would they do a season two. I can't even possibly think on how they could continue the spirit of Watchmen in another, in, in a, in another season. Um, I do still want to see Dan Dryberg and how that affects, you know, that effect. But yes, how do you how do you continue a, 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 a self-contained story, which was supposed to be self-contained from the very beginning with the whole Watchmen on um, 12 issues to this being its own standalone? How can you do another one and still maintain a quality and the spirit of the um, material? I think that they've left themselves a lot of places to go. Uh, I know they did. There's so many different still, things that they or, can do. How, how can you how can you maintain the spirit? That's the key thing. They could go in a number of directions with the characters and the threats that are left, but how can you maintain that spirit is 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 a big question, and it's going to be a hard one and a complex one to go through. So you dealt with racism and you dealt with politics with the original con you know original text and everything. Where is there where is there to go from here? Mm -hmm. What other what other you know, big theme or prestige theme can you deal with? Well, the great thing about the situation they're in is that there are no limitations on what they want to do. They can do anything, and, and it's very simple. They could go 30 years in the future for next season, and we really wouldn't notice because their entire technology, their mystics are so different from ours. Right. And what they have as far as technology is so different from us that it wouldn't be – it's not like trying to project our future 30 years from now, right? It's easier, and, and there's less like a willing suspension of disbelief you got to do, I guess, for that. Right. So, you know, you hope that maybe they'll deal with some of that. Um, the ideas of free will is something that I just think is so – it's just – you have a character that doesn't acknowledge free will, basically, mm -hmm. because he sees everything as set. Mm -hmm. And then the story is – this story of this season is effectively the counter-argument to that, right? Because if, if, if you're right that people don't have free will, you should be able to do what Ozymandias is trying to do, which is just plan out a good result for the next 40 years. But he's not able to. And yeah. that failure and his acknowledgement of that failure mm -hmm. is, is, to me, uh, what the main thing of season one is. Is, okay. hey... I couldn't have done this, and I know I couldn't have done this because the people would have had to have been like the people on Europa, and they're not. Right. So I know that it's not possible. So don't do it. Yep. 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 Well, we'll say some of the um our, our you know extended commentary for the wrap up because there's still a whole lot more to say, and we, oh, we could man. go on and more you know with. But this episode was great. I love the way it ended off. Like I said, big question on how Angela, you know, is she going to get the powers? Isn't she? So I love the way they ended that. Um. I, I, I just love this whole season. It's, it's been such a great journey with you also, Sam. You yeah, know, Thanks absolutely. so much for returning. It was uh, well. 
uh, to come back after watching what I did by myself and what I've done to your name is, uh, <laughs> oh. uh, you know, I appreciate I, it. At least, at least you spelled it right. That's my <laughs> Three so just, if, if, if you got to say something online, just make sure that you spell it right. That's it. <laughs> All right, everybody. So we'd love to hear from you. Throw us some feedback. We'll be talking next week about our uh, wrap up. Uh, we do make sure on... you subscribe. Yeah. If you're not subscribed, then you're not going to get all of our great content on the Mandalorian. You're not going to see our Nerdendum episode, which is going to be coming to you live Sunday night. Star Wars episode nine. We're going to Star see Wars then. episode nine. People make sure that you're tuning in. We will have it featured on our, we're actually going to have it on two channels mm. on our, um, on our carbon, um, uh, carbonite bounty, um, um, BS. And then we're also going to you know, put it on our our our, our, our which we also you know feature like a, a lot of our movie content and everything. Yeah, we did the other. This will we got to complete the set on Nerdendum because I think we did a seven and an eight. Yeah. Uh, so we got to do a nine. Uh, I I feel like I'm vibrating. I already got my tickets for Friday night, which is yep. like another new thing for me. Uh, I'm used to going and buying them at the theater, man. <laughs> at the theater, uh, you know, I saw episodes two and three in the line, so. I'm ready to see episode nine. Uh, I'm excited to see what they do with that. So keep your eyes peeled uh, for that review. That should be coming up soon. Um, I think we're going to be doing content, uh, TV content all year. Um, Yeah, so make sure you guys are staying tuned in. So you have to subscribe or else you're not going to know what I think about The Witcher. And I promise you it's weird. I think weird stuff about that. So you'll want to see that. There you go. There you go. you You got anything else for the good people? Uh, that's it. Make sure you guys keep tuning in. Like I said, subscribe. Make sure that you're going to our website, NerdCyclopedia.com. Make sure that you're following us all over social media at NerdCyclopedia. And make sure that you're telling your friends and everything. We like to think that, you know, you like us that much where you can tell your friends to, to, to um, you know, like us too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and subscribe as well. So we definitely appreciate your input and definitely appreciate your feedback. And look, we don't care about your friends. We care about you. <laughs> you're the core person. You're the person we're going to build our church on. Well, you're Here important. Your friends, they just have to subscribe. They don't, we don't care if they listen. Who cares about them? This is all about eyeballs. We'll, we'll have you, our though, conversation you. with your friends, too, once they get into yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> they're going to learn all about the business. But for you, you got to watch everything. And, and I'm sorry that you've been tied into this, but it's just it's going to happen. So it is what it is. That's right. You don't have free will either. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Peace. Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen is a production of Nerdcyclopedia Transcontinental Podcast. Nerdcyclopedia.